Hello and welcome to Female Cricket Live. Before we start our conversation today with regards to the previewing of match two that will be played between Bangladesh and South Africa tomorrow, that is 5th of March, let us all uh, extend our heartfelt condolences to the Australian cricket fraternity and of course to the global cricket fraternity as we have lost two of Australian greatest players in Rod Marsh and Shane Vaughan today. So I would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to these two legendary cricketers and of course to the entire Australian cricket family and the global cricket family as well. All right. So today, the 12th edition of ICC Women's Cricket World Cup kick-started with hosts New Zealand taking on the colourful Caribbean team and what a match it was. West Indies, they went on to win the match by just three runs as the match went all the way up to the penultimate ball of the innings. West Indies batting first posted 259 for 9 in 50 overs and in reply New Zealand could manage 256 in 49.5 overs. For West Indies, Hayley Mathis starred with the bat as she scored a wonderful century to take her side past that 250 run mark. Whereas for New Zealand, it was their captain, Sophie Devine, who smashed a wonderful century and led the run chase from the front. With regards to bowling, West Indies' Hayley Matthews was again among the wickets, first with the bat and now with the ball. She picked up two wickets and she was awarded the player of the match rightfully for her all-round match-winning performance. For New Zealand, it was Leah Tahuhu who was the pick of the bowlers as she picked up 3 for 57 in her full quota of 10 overs. So this was in brief what happened in the first match of the World Cup opener that was played today between New Zealand and West Indies. Now we have... Uh, the next match that is going to be played between Bangladesh and South Africa tomorrow, that is on 5th of March, and the match will be played at University Oval in Dunedin, and you can catch all the live action on Star Sports and Disney Plus Hotstar starting from 3.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. So to talk more about this match and what could possibly happen in the match tomorrow between Bangladesh and South Africa, I have with me Dinesha Devnarayan, Lezogo Pui, and Dhanush Lavanya. So, Dinesha Devnarayan, of course, needs no introduction. She has been the former captain of South African women's cricket team. She has more than 50 international appearances to her name. And in 2020, she was appointed as the head coach of South Africa women's under-19 team. Then we have Lizogo, who likes to be called Lee. So, I'll address her Lee henceforth. So, Lee is a, a cricket broadcaster and a cricket presenter. She was also the media manager for South African women's cricket team when they toured India in the year 2019. But before that, she was also a former cricketer playing for Northwest, that is in the domestic league of South Africa. And of course, we have Dhanush Lavanya, who is a content writer at Female Cricket. So it is my pleasure to have all of you on Female Cricket Live. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank okay. you for having us. So, Great. So, Dinesha, starting with you, of course, you, of course, being the former captain of South Africa and now South Africa missing their captain. Thank you for having me as well. I'm sorry, my network is really best. But... No problem, Lee. We are glad to have you on our show. Right. So, Dinesha, to begin with you, you, of course, being the former captain of South Africa and now South Africa missing their captain, Daniven Nierkirk, going into this World Cup. So, how big loss is that going to be for South Africa going into this World Cup? Yeah, look, it's it's a massive loss. Um, she's a world-class player. You know, she's a world beater. She always wants to do well. She, I know she wants to represent the country well. And, you know, she's been our skip for a while now. So I do know that the team is hurt by it. And I know she personally is very hurt by it. Uh, but that's one thing I like about South Africans is that we have resilience. Um, you know, and I know that even though that these are the cards that's dealt to us at the moment, I know that will show a front of resilience out there, but she will definitely be missed on the team. Just the energy she brings to the field, her education of the game, and obviously her skill. I mean, we take nothing away from her skill. So, you know, we will miss Dane, but um, I think the girls are aware of what what is happening, what's our current situation. We're very present in the moment. Um, and yeah, hopefully it doesn't show too much on the field. Absolutely. There's no doubt that South Africa are going to miss a quality player like Venya Cup. And of course, even we would miss to see a quality player like Venya Cup going into this World Cup. And as we are talking, we are joined by Anwar Kanan. So Anwar Kanan is a freelance journalist from Bangladesh. And he extensively covers cricket, women's cricket as well, of course. 
and he has been associated with Bangla Tigers in the Abu Dhabi T10 League and he is the content creator for their social media handles. So we are glad to have you Anwar with us talking to you on this show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am honored to be present among uh, such beautiful people like you. Amazing. So uh, Anwar, we were just talking about the absence of Daniel and Nierkirk and what impact that could possibly have on the South African team going into this World Cup. But uh, let me talk to you about the Bangladesh team. So they are making their debut, if we may say so, in the 50-hour World Cup. We all know that they have played T20 World Cups. They have given some tough fight to India and New Zealand in the World T20 that we saw in the year 2020. But now they are making their World Cup debut in the 50-hour format. So how is the excitement back in Bangladesh? Yeah, people are very excited, to be honest. And uh, people are, like to watch men's cricket more. And the fascination here is uh, incomparable. Because uh, in the subcontinent, as we know, people like to watch cricket and they love cricket. They feel the game. And uh, when women are playing the World Cup for the first time, ODI World Cup, so people are really excited and having uh, beating, beaten Pakistan in uh, the qualifiers. So it is a great uh, take uh, for the and great motivation for the team. And like uh, the Bangladesh have got some few cricketers and people will be looking, uh, keeping their eye on them. Mike. <clears throat> My question to Lee is, uh, South Africa is coming into their 2022 World Cup after two very good World Cups uh, in 20 over format and in 2017 when they went into the semi-finals and uh, they lost to England in 2017 and their 2020 World Cup, they came into the semi-finals and they lost there as well. My question is simple how, to Lee here. How is their approach going to be going into the 2022 World Cup and what is the reason behind them uh, failing to advance to the finals? I think so. There is a there is an error in the audio. So let me go to Dinesha Devnarayan. So the same question, uh, Dinesha. The performance of uh, South Africa over the last two World Cups have been really good, going into the semi-finals, but missing out the final ticket. Will we see that yeah. happening this time? Yeah, I mean that's a great question, and I get asked that a lot, and and it's on valid grounds. But if I look at where South African cricket was ten years ago, uh, it's nothing compared to the brand we play now. So it's about we've developed this brand, this attacking, this beautiful brand of cricket. And now we just need to, we need to fine tune the finer details. So if you ask us before those two World Cups, how many semifinals were we involved in? Not many. So that sort of plays a part that how do we get over that hurdle? We've got to take, I think we've got to take the basics of the game really seriously as well. We've got to spend time on things that we do well and don't leave it at the end of it. Don't leave it at the end or whether it's crunch time. Uh, you know, so I, I do believe we can sharpen up on a few areas that it doesn't have to get to that stage. But I think it's just that we need to get into semifinals and big World Cups and big competition, big series to get there. And what I like about this World Cup is that we had a fantastic run in the ODI series. Um, you know, over the last two to three years, we've been playing really good competitive cricket. And I think all of that forms part as to how our international team gets into a final and actually lifts the trophy. Absolutely, Dinesha. There is no doubt that South Africa has been playing some wonderful ODI cricket since the 2017 World Cup. I think they have almost a 65% success rate winning 28 out of the 41 ODIs that they have played from 2017 World Cup. So Anwar, let me ask you that Bangladesh is going to face a quality team like South Africa in their World Cup opener match, of course. Bangladesh playing their first World Cup, whereas South Africa being the semi-finalist in the 2017 World Cup. So how challenging is it going to be for Bangladesh? Because today we saw that West Indies, if I may say so, they caused an upset beating the hosts New Zealand. So do you expect something happening like that tomorrow? Yeah, as a fan, I would obviously uh, want that. Uh, and the thing is like uh, Bangladesh, this is obviously Bangladesh's first match in the World Cup. But uh, uh, this, might, this might be the first game. But in T20, we have seen that they have beaten uh, India to win the Asia Cup. And that would be the biggest motivation, I guess, coming into this match. Anwar, I have one more question uh, to you. The performance of Bangladesh, especially against Pakistan, has been excellent. 
in the uh, in the world cup qualifiers that happened last october they defeated pakistan and once again when the warm ups happened last week we saw them almost winning the match they lost just by 7 runs and they they had a big defeat against uh, england because they are the defending champions for sure but but a team like pakistan they have they have the cap- capability of beating them will we see that kind of a performance against south africa yeah yeah uh, i think the the players will be very much excited as this will be their first game and they will try their heart and soul to win the match because uh, they would try to make a mark on their first match and uh, as you were saying uh, they have played the last match the warm up match against pakistan accident uh, accidentally well and they have done a very good job uh, in sp- uh, the batting could be a something of a headache for the team but the bowling was really good and uh, uh, some a few players were uh, we have seen that individuals performing in the matches but i think uh, there will be if bangladesh can play as a team as a group so i think they can make something uh, challenging for the south, south africa to in the next match so uh, dinesha bangladesh do have a quality bowling attack in rumana ahmed Jahanara Alam, Salma Khatun, just to name a few. But I'm sure South Africa also has a strong batting. But one of the important batters in the South African lineup, Lizelle Lee, she's not going to be a part of the match tomorrow. So how big will that be the impact? And will Tazmeen Brits open the batting with Laura Wolford or do you see another opener with Wolford? Yeah, look, if I look at the West Indies series, um, it looks like we're going to go with the route of Tazmeen Brits. Um, and you know she has been playing a good attacking brand of cricket before the West Indies series. I think she just needs to find um, her tune or how does that fits in international cricket. And missing a player like Lazelle Lee is it's a huge. I mean she's ODI cricketer of the year. Um, it's really it's really massive for the team. But I do believe um, with Laura Wolfard and Tasman Brits at the crease, I do believe that the pair can put on a good partnership, a opening partnership. Uh, there might be a few options to open, but I think we're going to play it a little bit safe in what we've been working on. So I'm going to go with uh, Laura Wolfart and Tasman Brits to open tomorrow. Uh, well, uh, Lee, my question to you is: uh, as Dinesha said, uh, the opening pair of, of of South Africa is going to be Laura and uh, Tasman. As far as the bowling unit is concerned, they are pretty much dependent on the fast bowlers, is what I feel personally. Uh, Ismail has been one of their best bowlers in last five six years, or maybe since the time she has come into South Africa. And uh, Ayabonga Kaka, who is the, who has been extremely good over the last couple of years, and she played extremely well against West Indies, uh, leading up to the World Cup, taking ten wickets against them in the ODI series, and in the warm up games also she took two wickets as well. So how do you see uh, the spinners coming into the play? Because apart from the captain, no one else uh, has the experience like Sun Lun. Yeah, firstly, thank you for allowing me to come back on the platform. I thought I know my network has been quite bad, but hopefully you can hear me. And I'm glad to hear to just share my thoughts on just the bowling. Just to echo, firstly, just to echo Dinesh's um, uh, words on 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 the betting. I I do really still feel that Ted uh, as well as Laura Volfart could be a good combination opening. Um, like you said, we don't have a Lizal Lee, but de- definitely I'm backing at Tasman Brits and, and Laura Wolfart to open. And of course, when Lizal Lee comes back, then they can open, uh, she can open with the Laura Wolfart. But as far as the bowling is concerned, yeah, I mean, we've seen that the, the bowling attack is a pretty good one. And one thing that we have seen over the years is that we have a very, very good bowling attack. And I think that's the side that really holds All the team all together from Shabnam Ishmael to Marizan Cup and it's good to see Marizan Cup coming back after a shoulder injury and um and as far as the the, the spin bowlers is concerned yes Nate is as the captain uh, we're expecting her to lead from the front but uh, I, I don't have any doubt whatsoever that Lugumlava, as much as she's a youngster who has come into the side, but I remember the T20 World Cup that took place um, last year, she was given a new ball by Dane Fanny Gerg. So there's a lot of trust 
in, in youngsters and giving them more opportunities on big stages. So, of course, just today we've got you on Gulekomlaba, and and we also have the vice captain. Well, actually, we try on that and come in also in the middle, uh, for, for um, in the middle as well. Yeah, while while Lee has uh, thrown some light about the South African spinners in Malaba, Sunelu, and Chloe Tran, of course, who can bowl her left arm spin. Uh, Anwar, let me ask you that, just like any other Asian team, Bangladesh boasts of some quality spinners in Salma Khatun, Rumana Ahmed, who is the leading wicket taker for Bangladesh in ODIs, and the young Nahida Akhtar, who has caught everyone's attention after her wonderful Zimbabwe series when she picked up 11 wickets. And almost we can say she helped Bangladesh to clean sweep Zimbabwe in the three-match ODI series. So what are your comments about the Bangladeshi spinners? And if you can tell us more about Nahida Akhtar. Yeah, the thing is, uh, Bangladesh have got a very experienced side. Uh, we can say that uh, in uh, Salma Khatun, she is uh, one of the veterans of Bangladesh cricket, female cricket, and we have seen her uh, taking number one all rounder. And uh, she 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 was a very she is actually a very uh, kind of icon player to every youngsters here in Bangladesh, and. Uh, we have Ruman Akhtar, the leg break bowler. Uh, she is really excellent I, uh, and she is the uh, leading wicket taker for Bangladesh. So uh, I think uh, having a world class spin uh, leg break bowler like uh, Ruman Akhtar is kind of, uh, Ruman Ahmed is kind of a uh, privilege for Bangladesh team. And I think that uh, Salma Khatun and Ruman Ahmed's uh, experience will be a great fact for Bangladesh uh, to be performing well. And speaking of Nahid Akhtar, uh, she has been a young sensation, uh, as you have said in Zimbabwe cities. She bowled really well and uh, no doubt all eyes will be on her in the next match. Dinesha, my question to you is uh, South Africa in New Zealand. They have played 14 ODIs and they have won seven matches out of it. It is a 50% uh, winning percentage. And I, I also feel that uh, New Zealand's conditions are pretty much similar to what South African conditions are. And how is that going to help the South African unit get adjusted to the conditions in the World Cup? Yeah, I think the stats talk for itself. I mean, it's a 50% win ratio. But I'm going to go back to the cricket we've been playing recently, especially that series that we beat New Zealand in New Zealand 3-0. What I think that this team does well now is read conditions well. And I know it doesn't sound, it doesn't look like it in our warm-up games. But remember, that's at a different intensity. But I, I believe that the, the balance that we have in our team, they've played enough international cricket all over the world to assess conditions as quick as they can. I wouldn't say it's the same as South African conditions, um, but there is there's, there's a lot of similarities to it. Uh, knowing our South African unit, they'll look... It depends on the conditions on the day, but it'll look like they would want to maybe uh, put up a target and defend that. Uh, I, I mean, if you, if you look at the warm-up games results, as well, I think it's going that way as well. Um, but I think they, they tried a few... A few different things in the warm-up games. I think they're going to hit it on the nail starting from tomorrow. Um, and you, they, I mean, the team that assesses the conditions on the day is the better team. And I think South Africa is really well prepared to do that. They've played enough cricket on different conditions to do that. So, Dinesha, as you just touched upon the warm-up games, and though the result did not go in South Africa's way, if we may say so, but of course the match against India, it was pretty close. India just won by two runs. Probably even South Africa could have won that match. But oh, according to you, what could be the takeaways from these two warm-up games for South Africa? Yeah, I suppose the big thing is playing your full-strength team now. When we've got players like Marizan Cup back, um, you know, you've got your, you've got your combinations out there. And I think that's a big positive to take into it. Um, I always like to say, like, the teams that don't do well in warm-ups game ends up winning the World Cup. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that to that theory. But... Um, yeah, look, I don't want to read too much into it. I think the main thing is to get out there, assess the conditions. Let's look at what total, if we are set in, what we're willing to defend. And if we bowl in, uh, do, are we playing the brand where we want to bowl them out or we want to restrict them? I think it's going to be interesting talks around those match, uh, match awareness and what we're going to do really well in that. 
I think the main thing for me is that t- let's take away what we've done well in the warm-up games. Let's look at the areas we weren't so good at and let's find that 1% we can get better into our next game leading up into Bangladesh. Uh, my question to Ahmed is, uh, it's, it's Anwar, is uh, that Bangladesh, uh, the captain of Bangladesh, Nigar Sultana, has just captained the side for two ODIs. And she's pretty much young herself. And the team also is is a pretty much young side is what I see. The the, the average age of the players is just somewhat 25, 26. And uh, Nigar Sultana is just 24 years old. And she has good support with experience like uh, Romana Ahmed and all the, all the others. But what do you see uh, about the performance from the captain's side in the World Cup? Yeah, as, as you were saying that uh, Bangladesh is, whole Bangladesh is new to the ODI format, uh, the female part of Bangladesh cricket. And I think that uh, Nigar Sultana is also a really uh, young in, in case of her experience in captaincy. And I think that uh, this, this, uh, this tournament will be a learning phase for Bangladesh cricket. And uh, I think Bangladesh uh, cricket board will be uh, trying to take the positives from this tournament. And uh, there, I think uh, the team management will be trying to pick up the players uh, who will be playing well uh, and and make their uh, future team or that they will make future plans based on how the team performs in this tournament. So uh, in case, in speaking of the captaincy of Nahida, uh, I, I, uh, I can say that... Uh, Bangladesh have uh, very good options in batting and bowling, so I think that uh, she must be uh, she must be careful with the rotations as uh, she has very much options. And the one of the main strengths of Bangladesh is bowling. Uh, uh, there is variety of spinners and a lot of pacers in the team in this squad. So I think that uh, Nahida, uh, the captain, should must be. Uh, careful about the rotation and she uh, she should uh, be smart in rotation of the bowlers and I think uh, if she can do well in this case I think uh, the team uh, there is nothing to be much afraid of in this tournament Santa, as Anwar is talking about uh, Nigar Sultana who is Bangladesh's captain though she has the experience of captaining Bangladesh in just two ODIs and four T20Is she has the services of Rumana Ahmed, who has been a captain of Bangladesh for 18 ODI. So I'm sure she can take a leaf out of Rumana's book and lead the Bangladesh team going into this World Cup. So Dinesha, we are just a few hours away from the exciting contest that we are going to witness between Bangladesh and South Africa. So according to you, who could be the players to watch out for from South African perspective? I, I wouldn't do the team justice if I said one or two players. I think it's the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> the plain 11. <laughs> but um, look, you want at, at big events like this, you want your senior players to step up. So the likes of obviously our captain, Sunay Lees. Uh, and then we've got a wonderful pace attack. Um, Marizan Cup, an all rounder, proper all rounder, one of the best in the world. Uh, Shivnam Ismail, Ayabonga Kaka has been coming on lovely. And then just with the batting, um, I think Volfart up top plays a pivotal role in the uh, team. We've got lots and lots of experience in Minion Dupree. And then Chloe Tryon with the big hit in. I mean, if the platform is set, we're going to see fireworks there in Dan Eden. <laughs> Anwar, my question is uh, pretty much similar to yeah. how uh, Dinesha's was. But my question, uh, the, the same question to as per the perspective of Bangladesh is what I ask. Bangladesh men's team have that capacity of coming up and beating big teams. They have done that. They have done. They have beaten India in the World Cup, and they have, they have, have they have had good uh, performances in the men's cricket, and even in the women's cricket, they are number sixth in the ICC rankings, and they have also the capacity of beating teams like Pakistan, like how we saw in the warm-up. Almost they won against Pakistan. They won against Pakistan in the qualifiers, and the Zimbabwe series was really good. How will the uh, whole team will be looking forward for the very first match? It will be exciting, right? Yeah, uh, I have said this earlier that the uh, Bangladesh whole Bangladesh team will be very much excited to participate in this, this tournament. And as this would be their debut match, uh, they would be 
trying to take as many as positives they can from this tournament. And uh, again, it is a learning phase for Bangladesh women's team, and they will be trying to uh, do uh, as much as they can for uh, to, and they will try their best to beat South Africa and. Uh, the, you can say it an upset, but I think uh, they, they will be trying and th this will be their duty in this tournament. And uh, speaking of players, I can say that uh, up at number three, there will be Farjana Hawk, who have played really well in the match against England. She has scored 81 runs. And uh, I think uh, she has to step up tomorrow also in against South Africa and again... Uh, there was an, another player named Sharmin Akhtar uh, who have played well against Pakistan. Uh, sorry, I, I just uh, got confused. Uh, it was Sharmin Akhtar who scored 81 runs against uh, England in the first warm-up match. And it was Farjana Hawk who scored 71 versus Pakistan in the last warm-up match. So I think uh, uh, these two players will be uh, the main bet bettors for uh the team, but the young players also should step up tomorrow and take the responsibility on their shoulders. I think uh, it is going to be an exciting contest between Bangladesh and South Africa because as I think the Bangladesh team is called the Bangla Tigress. So we may see the Tigress roaring tomorrow against South Africa. So it has been amazing talking to you, but before we let you go, let me put all of you in spot. Dinesha, Lee, and Anwar, of course. Tell us the predictions for tomorrow. Who's going to win? Lee, if we can go with you. I think uh, uh, till the time Lee is able to join us. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, Lee. Yes, yes, yes. Who, who's going to win tomorrow? Um, before I make the predictions. Before I make the predictions, I just want to say that um, as far as the batting is concerned, I know Coach Denisha didn't want to say who's going to be the standout players or who we're going to look at, but I just want to mention that it's so important that our top order batters are able to rise to the occasion tomorrow, and, and I'm expecting that from Laura Volford more than anything, more than anyone else. And I think what have been given an opportunity to be part of her first World Cup campaign, I trust that she'll be able to rise to the occasion. So I'm looking forward to just seeing Tasman and Laura start off the, com the campaign uh, on a really high note. But I think it's, it would be great for us to also see see the middle, um, um, just the batting in the middle come together because I think one thing that I've seen in the last couple of games has been a bit of a struggle. So if either um, Laura Goodall, if, she, if she's given an opportunity to come in at three, I'm trusting her to be able to just, you know, play a really good knock from, from her end. But like um, she said, uh, Tryon, we're very much trusting on that big hitter at the end to really be be able to give us an extra, extra 30 runs that we need at the back end. Um, as far as the predictions are concerned, it, it, it's, it's an obvious one. <laughs> it has to be South Africa that walks away with the first win. And um, not that I'm, I'm not quite too, too keen on... Um, or not trusting Bangladesh to be able to, to come through, especially that it's their maiden campaign. I'm pretty sure they're going to walk into this one and two to really have their stamp in this World Cup. But I really think that South Africa is a really strong, strong side. We have a really good bowling attack and, and our batting is pretty good. And, um, and, I, and I trust that today we'll be able to lead the team to victory tomorrow. Um, but moreover, I think the attitude that the team has, they, they have the aim and ambition of making sure that each and every single game that they take, they played like the World Cup final. And with that kind of mindset, I really do trust that South Africa will be able not only to reach the semifinals, but reach the finals. Oh, that's a big prediction coming up from Lee that South Africa may reach the finals in this 2022 World Cup. All right. Anwar, let us get you in. What are your predictions for tomorrow's game between South Africa and Bangladesh? Uh, speaking from a fan's perspective, I surely want Bangladesh to win the match. And uh, speaking from a neutral zone, uh, South Africa is clearly the favorite for tomorrow's match. But uh, if Bangladesh bat batters can perform well and uh, the bowlers can do their duty, 
uh, I think uh, they, it will be a challenging match for South Africa too. Finally, let's hear from the former South African cricketer, Dinesha. What are your predictions for tomorrow's game? Yeah, I, I think the team that plays a better cricket, eh? <laughs> But um, no, I'm going to have to stick with my coaching knowledge and obviously a fan of the game and a student of the game. I'm going to have to go with South Africa. But I've played against Bangladesh and they're going to put up a fight. That I can guarantee you. And that's what one of the amazing traits about Bangladesh cricket and the woman that plays the game. But uh, I'm going to go based on my knowledge and where my heart lies will be in South Africa. And whatever may be the result, but what witness, what the contest that we witnessed today in the first match that was played between New Zealand and West Indies, let us hope that we get some more matches. And hopefully if we get to see tomorrow again, nothing like it. All right. So thank you. Thank you to Dinesha, Lee, Anwar, Dhanush for joining our conversation and talking to us about the Next match that is going to be played as a part of the World Cup, it is going to be between Bangladesh and South Africa. The match will be played on 5th of March. It will start at 3.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. You can catch all the live action on Star Sports and Disney Plus Hotstar. And if you are in a different location out of India, then you can always check it online where you can see the live action. But yes, the match is going to be telecast live and make sure that you are there to catch all the live action. So we'll be back again tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m. to preview the exciting contest between India and Pakistan that will be played on 6th of March. So I request all the fans and viewers to do tune in to female cricket and join our conversation. And yes, you can send all your questions using hashtag female cricket live. Thank you to Dinesha, Lee, Anwar, Dhanush once again. Thank you to all the viewers and fans for watching this. Thank you. Yes, thank you.